Okay, this will be our introduction video, and uh, here is our final uh, image of the cavity bug. Um, this was created for a dentist, and he wanted this basically for the side of his uh, car. It was It's a beetle of a car, and here's actually the car after it was done. Um, so, but to start out with, um, we'll just go ahead and kind of go through this a little bit to kind of show you uh, how I broke this out in layers. Um, <clears throat> The main focus of this video is just kind of going through the painting. I do have this as a vector file as far as the illustration goes. Uh, here's Illustrator, and the only thing that I really did in Illustrator was just this, the text part of it. So, um, and you can see that I've got just some slight gradients for the the text with the kind of the back or black stroke around it. Um, but uh, so that, are, that is our Illustrator file. Now this had to be a pretty big graphic because it was used for the car here. So I want to make sure I designed it at um, a reasonable size. So anytime you're uh, going to create a graphic, especially for maybe the side of a car or something maybe even bigger, you got to keep in mind of the final output of your graphic. So I knew this had to be somewhere around, uh, let's say, 24 inches. Um, wide or all the way around basically so I think it was actually it came to smaller a little bit smaller than that but you want to make sure you design a little bit bigger because um, you can always scale it down you're not going to lose any quality but if you if you scale your image up um, you will start to lose a little bit of quality so you want to make sure you uh, design at a high enough resolution now here my document for this final image here or what I started with is if we go into uh, where is that at now? Image size. You can see you've got the width is set for 20 and the height okay, is set for 18. Okay, to start 18. things off, we're going to go ahead and create yeah, the eye here. The we'll create a new layer. And then we'll use the elliptical tool and just trace or just draw our eye here right over the sketch. And then uh, we're just going to fill that in with the white. And that's going to be command, D, command or control D, delete actually. And then uh, we'll grab our body layer four, where the character's body is on, and we'll just paint underneath that layer where the eye is. And what's nice, and that's one of the things that's nice about using layers is, especially for when I'm creating eyes here, is you can just put the layer of the eye on top of the, um, the underneath layer, which is the skin tones, and you can shade and uh, and not have to worry about affecting your eyeball here. So. We're just going to grab some darker values by hitting the eyedropper and then uh, just painting in some shadows, trying to redefine uh, the eye and the. Okay, the first uh, thing we'll work on is the, the hand, hand here. Yeah, and what I've done is just I dropped the lighter value on his face here, and then we'll also eye drop a, sh a shadow tone to put underneath the arm here. And like I've said in the previous video, I'm just constantly going back and forth between the eyedropper and the uh, brush tool. So I, I'll typically start out with some shadows. I'll just scale it down to fit, and then I'll add it right be, below the uh, layer 4, which is his body layer. So the finger goes behind the, the hand. And then I'll just merge them together by hitting Command-E or Control-E. To blend those two together as far as the transform goes so they fit and transform and flip horizontal and I gotta make sure I rotate those as well and that's how I did that arm and hand and now what I'll do is just erase out a couple couple of those spots just so they don't look like they're they're the same as the other hand or they've been uh, mirrored over and again using a light up uh, small opacity setting like 21 is good to make those colors blend nice and of course we need a little bit of our rim light to give that extra three dimension Here I'm trying to paint in reflections as well.
And we also need to make some nice, yeah, some nice heavy shines in the eyes as well. So I'll show you how to do that. Here I went to the filter and the blur filter so I could have those blend without having to paint. Sometimes I'll do that too if I just want to make a nice blend without having to paint it. I'll just blur it out with the filter. And I'll paint some highlights back in just to give that eye a little more edge and here we're going to blur it again. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of bringing some shadows in where those lips of the eye are, or the eyelid basically. And then reapplying that blur filter. I think that works nice for the eyes because the eyes aren't really textured, so you want a nice smooth look for those. 